Messing up like that. Damn it. Oh, come on, Zai. Hold up. Rich, you got me nervous, man. <laughs> <laughs> Once I get past this, then it's just gonna be on the roll. The rest of it just flows. Yeah, exactly. Well, I always I always usually mess up in the intro. Well, I get it, I get it. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the live from Planet X podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are blessed to sit down with a pioneering visionary in the entertainment field. He is a graduate from the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale, an accomplished actor, writer, director, music producer, and more. My friend for over the past 25 years, Richard Fitzpatrick, CEO of Black Triad Entertainment, is in the house with us tonight. Richard, what up? Hey, man, what's going on? Chilling, man, just maintaining this pandemic, this whole COVID-19 thing is going on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. How you navigating the new norm, bro? Oh, man. You know, I'm just trying to stay busy, man. As much as being in the house can keep you busy. You see what I'm doing? Started the podcast, still working on music and stuff. Um, video editing, getting more back into the video editing. Loving that, man. So decided to make me a podcast. But, man, what you, what you been up to? I'm just holding it down with the fam. Same thing, man. Um, trying to determine... You know how we're going to navigate production once we get past this. Um, everybody keeps saying, you know, once things go back to normal, things ain't never going back to normal, bro. We'll just have to deal with the changes that, you know, are um, that are what they are. Um, but um, on a positive end, we wrapped one film prior to um, the pandemic in November. So that should be released around August. September, October. Um, the uh, television show is three uh, episodes away from uh, being completed. And we just licensed a project that was shot here locally on Tubi TV. So it's streaming live right now. Nice. And um, then I have one other that's in pre production that, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, as soon as this is, is, is past us. Or as soon as we develop, you know, a way to um, produce and still adhere to safety protocols, you know, we'll get right into uh, production of that particular project. So busy, man, busy. Yeah, I was, I was on your website right now on the Black Triad, and I see all the different, the different joints: Bad Candy, Heart of the Champion. I remember Love Trap, man, yeah. Rich, man. That was one of my questions. I wanted to ask you, like, what? what made you want to go into the direction of filmmaking and like, what was your inspiration to start doing that? Cause all your different well, projects, we're going to get into them. To be honest with you, man, um, you know, my, my first love was music and um, that's originally uh, what I went to the art Institute for, you know, me and you, we were up and down that road together, you know, right. right. Yo, I, thank you. I thank you for that, man. I never forget that. Yo, it's like, like I remember we was in school and it was like, I think it was our video editing class. And like the people were going around saying where they were from. And then uh, it got to you and you said you was from Port St. Lucie. I was like, oh, it's that holy from Port St. Lucie. I was like, yo, that's where I'm from too, man. I was like, and it just it just surprised me that somebody down there, and then come to find out, you know what I'm saying? We were just like, yeah. And then I used to catch a ride with you sometimes, man. And the artist yep. too, I was just, I wish I could go back in time myself. <laughs> so it was... It was actually one of the instructors, um, Susan Poel, 
had told me that I should, you know, pursue acting. And and, and when she, the first time she said it, I, I ain't gonna lie, I laughed in her face, man. I was like, yeah, that's not me, you know. Um, but she set me up with an interview at, uh, she must have seen something I didn't see. She set me up with an interview at um, Avenue Productions, man, and the rest is history. You know, I, I, I started working and, and I was actually turning away work. Um, been in everything from something about Married to Bad Boys too, you know? Yep. And, but, but then I hit a wall. Once I hit that wall, you know, what are you going to do? Um, and so I just changed direction. You know, when, when a challenge presents itself, you're going to do one or two things. You can either fold up shop or you can pivot and change mm-hmm. direction. And I decided that, um, hell, from what I witnessed, can't be that hard. I make my own movies. You know what I mean? So I no. started with Love Trap and, um, you know, as the executive producer of Love Trap, directed by Frank Gooden. And hey, the film took off and I haven't looked back since. That's what's up, man. Yo, and um, your new series, the new series you've been working on, Lawless. Shout out to all the crew and actors who share in your vision and help make it happen. Tell the people about Lawless, man, because I'm real excited about that myself, man. Proud of you on that. Lawless, Lawless is a another attempt to get the people of this area to see how impactful um, film and TV can be here on the Treasure Coast. Not just for the production value, but the creation of jobs, the stimulating of the economy. All of that, you know, when you when you look at what, uh, one state line away, you know, it did $9 billion in revenue in 20, 2017, I believe it was. But Lawless, Lawless is a, it's a dark detective drama, you know, and um, it deals with a lot of, a lot of what we see in, on social media, what we see in the news. You know, we pull right from those stories and we, we draw them into the overall story of Lawless. And, uh, man, we've been having a lot of fun. You know, we've, we've faced some challenges, but we've been having a lot of fun with Lawless, man. A lot of fun. Right, right. Was was that all your brainchild right there to Lawless? Like, that was you? You came up with the concept and everything? You know, like... Yeah. I do a lot of... I do a lot of people watching, man. And I also do a lot of uh, soul searching. I don't... I, I'm, I'm not quick to respond to what I see in social media. You know, I'm one of the guys that like to reflect first. And if you see me comment on something on social media, trust me, I have been over it and over it in my mind. And, you know, because what we have to do, what we have to learn is that, listen, no matter who you are, put you in the right circumstances, and I trust you, you won't recognize yourself. Hmm. Right, right. And that's each and every one of us, man. You put us in put us in the right situation, boy. And look, you'd be like, I can't believe I can't believe he did that. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Rich, like you were just bringing up, man, about um, you saying one state away. I, I know you, everybody. You know, you're talking about Georgia. You know, yeah. and the, they've been doing a lot of the Marvel movies, all kinds of movies. Tyler Perry's got his big studio thing popping up there. And yeah, man, I, that was one of my my things that I wanted to mention. I was talking about special effects in the Treasure Coast. Like, it don't take nothing for somebody to have like a, and that's exactly what you have. You guys have like a a film production media company, you know that that could just, you know, who knows? And I, and I hope it does, man. I want to be part of it any way, shape, or form I could do. You ain't got to pay me or nothing. Anything I can do to help out, please let me know. Well, we, we want to we want to change the landscape, man. We want to change the landscape so that it's possible for you know even to introduce new talent um, to to. I mean, every every film every film has a soundtrack, you know. Every what was what was the most popular thing about Empire? Yeah. Aside from the story, it was the music. Right. Right. Okay, yeah, so Foley and everything, the special effects sounds and everything. All of that has to come together in order to make, you know, in order to sell that story, in order to create, in order to build. All of that has to come together. And so there's a, a lot of talent that's just wasting away here. You know, people looking for opportunity, thinking they 
they have to go to Georgia, or thinking they got to go to L.A. But the, the bottom line is, if you have to go there and you can't afford to go there, what happens to your dream? You just give up? Right. You know? And, I mean, you can go, go back to when we started at the Art Institute. When we started that journey, we started that journey with, you know, with big dreams. We had yeah. big aspirations and big hopes. I never hope. lost them. I never lost them, too. I'm so, I'm so proud of you to see you still going. Man, and Poheem, Rob, and Trong, too, man. I keep in contact with them guys, man. Everybody's still being creative, doing their thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's important that your dream, your dream, the only way and the only time your dream dies is when you quit. Right. I mean, how many stories have we heard? Even Tyler Perry's story, you mentioned him. Tyler Perry was homeless for five years, bro. Oh, for five years. Wow. You know, a lot of people don't want to give up anything, though. They don't want to sacrifice anything. They think that they can cross that bridge without, they can get the reward without any risk. You know, when we, when we, when, when we started, when was, what year was that? Was that 94? Mm-hmm. October 94. October 94. So in October of 94, you know, Bro, that's a lot of that's a lot of highway between here and, and Fort Lauderdale. That's a lot of highway. That's a lot of I mean the classes weren't, you know, it wasn't no 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 walk in the park. You know, that was real world training and you had to go through some real world situations. And so the only thing that preserved us was not giving up. Man, big up all the teachers at the Art Institute. Mr. Campbell, uh, Mrs. Belafonte, and some a bunch of other teachers. I remember the the the, the guy who was he was an African American gentleman who was our, our video dude. He him, I can't remember his name, but he was awesome too, man. And shoot, yeah, man. I didn't finish the artist too, man. I had stopped going, one of my biggest mistakes, but like I learned so much when I was there and just seeing the way the teachers were moving and, and the way the way the actual world worked, man, it was just inspiration to me. And I think I thank God for going, <laughs> you know, what yeah. I'm saying one of the things that one of the things that they taught us is that, you know, that book, that's book learning. That's in a perfect world. So what we experience, though, we experience that real world stuff. You know, when you're on set and something doesn't go the way it's supposed to or equipment breaks down, or you can't, you don't have something that you, that is, that you envisioned, but now you have to switch it up, bro, that's that real world thing right there now. True that. This ain't, this ain't for the fate of heart, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is absurd. And hey, Rich, man, you know, man, big you up, man, because like a lot of people, they might have an idea and things, but like you, you really put things into action physical things like this man has dvds and and retail outlets like walmart and like you know like the legalities and the business and to make things really come to life and happen man like like how like the knowledge of all that that people people don't have man like how did you acquire was that was that book knowledge was that real world experience just learning what you had to do to like really get your product out there to compete with the big leagues you know you never stop learning, man. You never stop learning. You know, um, pick up a book, man. You know what I mean? You, you never, you're never going to know all that you need to know. And let me tell you something: the the landscape changes with mm. with new tech and with new technology. Bro, you're it's talking crazy. about the streaming now. You're talking about the streaming now and everything. That's what's up. Bro, when we started, we started editing on actually tape. We were editing on tape, bro. You know, and then we 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 moved to Avid, but shoot, now you got Avid, you got um, Premiere Pro, you got Final Cut Ten, you've got right, you've got so many editing platforms out here, you know. And let's not even get into you know the cameras and the equipment. But that seems like it changes every every three months. That's so, why I be like, I sometimes I feel like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it works for you, keep keep it going. <laughs> 
Like you some know? people try to stay, stay up on all the latest music equipment that comes out, and then you got once you get something new, then you got to learn how to do it. Then that's that learning curve and taking that time. But like, find something you're happy with and use it. <laughs> so, so I mean, that's that's one. That's one. Uh, obviously, that's one frame of thought. And you know, once again, a person who wants a person who wants to use the uh, Ari. Now, I don't have anything against you know Ari. Uh, camera, but you talking about a camera that's probably what thirty grand? You know, I saw a guy do a short movie with three iPhones that was a multi award winner. <laughs> right, uh, right. So, that, you know, my I, my iPhones ain't no joke too, crispy. What, bro? Listen, <laughs> it's not even when. Remember, I used to I used to do paint and body. I used to have the custom paint and body shop. You know, right, and right. I used to tell guys all the time, it's not. Some of these guys will buy a six hundred dollar paint gun, okay, and the paint job still filled with orange peel, okay. And I used to tell guys all the time, it's not the gun, it's the guy behind the gun. All right. I go buy a ten dollar gun and I'll paint them what? Mm -hmm. Lead them to us, bro. So you have to learn to, like you said, you you perfect the equipment that you have. And then you allow your passion to show through on the work that you do. But you never stop learning. You never stop learning. Man. True that. Yo, Rich, with the art of storytelling, how does an idea come to you for a plot in a movie or a TV series? Like, what's what's your creative process? Like, wow. That's a good question, man. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I got a bunch of here for you. <laughs> Sometimes I can just be sitting and watching someone do something and I'll be like, what in the hell? You know, because you wonder, what's that train of thought? Why would you do something like that? I'll see something on social media, you know, because people share some crazy stuff on social media. And I'm like, bro, that's not going to end well. And then, you know, you start asking those questions. What if, you know? What, where, who, why, and how? What if? You know, what if the circumstances had changed? What if they were a minute too late or a minute too early? All of these things are circumstances even in life. You That's know, a, some Twilight Zone, Alfred Hitchcock type thing. <laughs> what if the what if? Because <laughs> that's a very powerful question. What if? You know, what if what if we had never connected at the Art Institute? Yo, 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 I tell you, God works in mysterious ways, man. And I, I always been wanting to work with you, man. But, you know, before, like, working a job and working with family, everybody's doing their own their own things. Everybody's trying to accomplish their goals. So, man, just that's why, you know, what I'm saying I'm glad I bumped into you at the gas station. And, I'm, and at one point you was just like not on social media a lot. You was just like MIA. So I know you was busy doing stuff. So I'm glad we did link back up, man. Yeah, for sure. You know, um. This is when I hear people say, um, I'm grinding. Okay. Right. Metaphorically, that sounds good. But what is grinding? If you look the definition up, grinding, mm -hmm. two things grinding against each other cause friction. You know, right. friction causes heat. Heat might give off sparks. You know, something's going to get worn, something might something get worn might out. So, so if you truly grind, and then that means you're busy, you know. You and and this industry, man, listen, you you have to stay busy, or you'll be forgotten. Really, exactly. quick. for real, for real, man. Yo, um, yo, let's do a Planet X random topic. You know, you're on the live from Planet X podcast, right. where we right. talk hip hop and all things strange and paranormal. So let me get the uh, let me pull up the joint you here, boss. See what we got, Rich. Okay. Rich talked about he had he had he had a suitcase like this with like eighty thousand dollars in it one time. <laughs> Yo, we'll tell that story later. Yo, I'm but, uh, in my life, bro. Let's see what you got. Let's. Oh, you see that? Okay. Okay. Area fifty one. What's, uh -huh. what's your your take or opinion thoughts on Area fifty one? Do you think? It's just like top secret government programs, or you think there really was some back engineering of some extraterrestrial vehicles there or whatever. What you think? Area 51. I think 
I honestly think so. I mean, look at technology, how fast it's progressing. Mm. So, you know, when I tell people that when I was growing <laughs> up to the, the thought of having I mean having a phone in your hand that you could walk around with, bro, that wasn't something that we even that we even we saw it on Star Trek. <laughs> That's not something we thought we would see in a lifetime, but since since that, I mean, what else have we seen? Look how fast and how rapidly technology is advancing. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me we're growing in leaps and bounds that quickly based on our own intellect? Or are we reverse engineering some things that may have come to us in an opportune manner? I'll put it that way, you know. Um, so with regards to Area 51, I absolutely believe they got, you know, some things in there that we're mm -hmm. not privy to. We had that, uh, remember when they were talking about storming Area 51? <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not a good idea. <laughs> you tell me about it, right? <laughs> it's a military <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, so man. So why would you, if, if there's nothing to guard or nothing to hide, why do you need a military base? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we're gonna we're gonna find out one day, man. That, that uh that scientist Michio Kaku, have you seen that? You Google yeah. his name right now. He said, now this is what's really strange. He said that by the end of this year, he's predicting that we will come in contact with some alien race. We'll come strange. in contact? No, they're gonna no, they're gonna let them out the bunker. Which one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. It's crazy, man. <laughs> The real though, I think some folk, you know, I know, I know Men in Black is a, is a film, but bro, I, some folk, some folk look like they could be a little alien. Yeah, I feel okay. you on that. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> some hybrids out there running around. The Men in Black, I think they came and knocked on my door about a month and a half ago. Uh -huh. let, me, let me get the time. Right. I think about a, about a month ago. Right. I, I was maybe about six episodes in my podcast. I hear a knock on the door, right? Mm -hmm. Go look out the window. Black SUV. Dude standing by the SUV. Another suit's on. Black. I didn't answer the door. I was like, yo, who is these cats? I was like, yo, I didn't answer the door. I, let, I didn't answer the door. They got in their car and left. Mm. Later, on that, later on that day, I went outside to check my mail. <laughs> Uh, the mugs is down in the cul-de-sac. I'm like, damn, I, I ain't did nothing. I'm just talking about, you know, aliens and stuff. I don't know. Might have <laughs> I, ain't, on the I ain't told nobody <laughs> that. I told two people that story. Rich is the third, and now the yeah. whole world knows. My yeah. wife knows, and my other friend knows. I told them that. Just told Rich. But yeah, yeah. man, be like, calm down. I, I'm not doing nothing, Dad. I'm not doing it. You, you, you might have you touched on some sensitive subject and it was right after right after i interviewed betty and barney hill's niece right after oh. that yeah mm -hmm. so the betty and barney hill story yeah 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 and james earl jones played barney hill in an old movie but yeah that happened rich <laughs> that's taking it back that's taking it way back Yo, Rich, man, I know you You know a lot of Hollywood connects, man, and I know you be traveling all around doing stuff. People people don't even know Rich be bouncing, Rich be all over the place. Man, you got any wild, crazy Hollywood stories you could tell us? You got any Hollywood stories, man? I and mean, there's a lot of them. Some of them, you know, some of them is almost like the SUV. <laughs> <laughs> some of right. them you can't tell, you know what I mean? But, yeah, this, I mean, this, this been, I've had some crazy experiences, Um the late, the late great, you know, um, my man. Uh, oh shoot, um, he played. Um, he played uh, Phil in Harlem Nights. Um, Danny, Danny. Um, Danny Aiello. 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 Yeah, the yeah. late great Danny Aiello, man. What an incredible, um, what an incredible man, yeah. bro. I mean, just down to earth cat, man. But Danny invited me to the first time I met Danny. He invited me to um, a, a dinner club um, in New York. And so I flew up, you know, and I was really excited, but a little nervous too. meet Danny. I mean, that's Danny Aiello, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, so I walk in and I'm, you know, I, I pride myself on being early. 
So I walk in, there's nobody there. And I see all of the, the placemats for, for, for dinner and stuff. And I'm like, what the heck? You know, and so then people start coming in and they're looking really familiar to me. And I'm like, I know these cats from somewhere. <laughs> so, the, you know, three or four more people come in. I'm like, man, these cats look familiar. So the the the, uh, <laughs> the Peter D comes up and she's like, may I take your coat? And I'm like, take it for what? <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's like, may I take your coat? I, oh, oh, okay, yeah, you can take my coat. So she said, let me show you to your table. And I'm sitting at the table and the cat across from me, I'm like, where do I know this cat from? You know, and then they start catching on. So now they start messing with me, right? <laughs> and they're like, now where are you from? And I'm like, and I'm telling them, you know, I flew in, but you know, I'm usually from Manhattan, but I flew in from Florida. Oh, Sunshine State, huh? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And you know, I don't want to ask them because, you know, you kind of feel like you should know who they are. You know, you just got invited, so you should hey, know. A bunch of actors, bunch of actors and people. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I was like, one of the guys said they were talking back and forth, and it was like. So my man, and I'm like, hold up, wait a minute now. And then the other guy starts laughing. He said, oh, he's catching on. And then the third guy said, forget about it. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Everybody that has ever been in an Italian, you know, mob movie was at this dinner, bro. Wow. I'm talking about the cast, the Sopranos, you know, uh, Goodfellas. I'm like. Holy smoke. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, I knew I recognized you. He said, so, so what's the matter? You worried you're going to get whacked? <laughs> I said, no, I'm, I'm Danny's guest. So no, I ain't worried. I ain't worried. But man, incredible night. And then when I finally met him, I kept calling him Mr. Aiello. I'm like, Mr. Aiello. And so finally he slams his hand on the table, man. And he's like, my name is Danny. And I'm mm. like, uh... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And so right. it's like, I invited you here. This is my family. I invited you among my family. You wouldn't be here if, you know, I didn't consider you, you know, family. So I'm like, wow, okay. Appreciate that, you know. Nice. Um, but what a great guy, man. Just a great guy. You know, that's one of the stories I could share. Some of the others are uh, kind of risque, you know. <laughs> so, awesome, uh, but great. yeah, and um, I've had some considerable some great experiences, man, in my travels. And um, I wouldn't change them for nothing in the world, man. True that. Rich, man, like, I know you I know you be getting into the acting, man. You're, you're a very awesome actor, man. Like, what, what tips can you give, like, an inspiring actor when they're trying to learn the craft to, like, get into character? Like, what tips can you provide? Because I'm trying myself, man. As you, as you can see, lady, you know, I've been trying some i'm trying to get back in. i'm telling you rich and i told you this before i used to tell rich man rich i want to act too man and rich used to just be kind of blowing me off like man you're the music guy i got here you know like but i'm trying to get back into it myself man so what what tips can you give some inspiring actors to like the most, the most important thing bro be in the moment that's the most important thing do not afraid to be in the moment don't we listen we're not as as an audience we're not interested in you being cool mm -hmm. we're not interested in you being cute to be honest with you you know we, we're some pretty messed up people as an audience we want to see you suffer we want to see your pain you know what i mean you know if 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 that love interest in the film has got you so messed up that you know we want to see that and too, I see too many guys, man. They say, well, they think to themselves, like, well, if I'm angry, if I'm angry, then I have to be loud. I have to yell. You know, I have to, you know, I have to, you know, my face needs to be, you know. That's, bro, sometimes you're so angry, all you could do is laugh. Mm -hmm. You're that angry, mm -hmm. you know. And so you have to be in the moment, man. Trust the moment. You know, the same questions, what, who, um, why, when, and where, the same questions. You got to ask them questions for every character you portray and trust the moment, man. And 
I learned this a long time ago. Somebody, um, somebody told me it actually was Bill Duke. Um, and I consider Bill Duke. Shout a- out Bill Duke. Shout oh, out man. Bill Duke. Love him, man. If you ever hear from him, tell him I said what's up and I love him in the Predator movie, man. Most definitely. What an incredible director. Okay. But Bill Duke, he was like, he told me, I don't want to see your representative. Okay. And, you know, at first, you know, you question, okay, what's, who's my representative? Your representative is that guy that if he's on a date for the first time, he won't pass gas. <laughs> His stomach will be in knots, but he won't pass gas because, you know, he don't want to, he don't want to offend the young lady. You know, the representative is the guy that, you know, he's going to act cute. He's going to, this is the way. This is this is how I pretend or how I put off. This is how I act. OK, but a true uh, in truth, what is acting? Is it pretending? Or is it reacting? To a situation, to the stimuli, right. you know, if I walked up to you right now and you didn't know, me, if I walked up to you in the store and I started yelling at you from the top mm. of my and started cussing you out and stuff like that, there's going to be a certain response from you that's natural. At first, it might be, man, who are you talking to? <laughs> it might be that. Or, bro, do I know you? You know, it might be that. But mm. eventually, if it escalates, you're going to start raising your voice too. Right. That's a natural reaction. If I walked into if I if if I walked into a store and I slapped you, you don't know me from a can of paint, and I slapped you, bro. That reaction is gonna be real, and it's gonna be raw. You know what I mean? A lot of people spend too much time second guessing the moment, living the moment. Mm. Word up, Rich. That's why I want you to direct me as some some something one day, like me and V Sharp. Yo, we gotta. I'm telling you, yo, we had the little meeting. You know, at at the uh, at the Panera that day, but I'm telling you, man, I'm still on point to try to get you in to pull you in to help us do some stuff. And I got a little bit of extra bucks now, so I'm trying to make something happen, man. We can make this happen soon. But when you was talking about living in the moment, what I wanted to ask you, like living in the moment, um, zigzag be zoning because you know we live from the Planet X podcast, so living in the moment right now, Rich. We're going to hit you with the Planet X tele- telepathy. We're going to okay. do a telepathy joint. Okay, okay. I am going to, we're living in the moment right now. Zigazai is transmitting live from Planet X right now. I'm going to draw a shape. I'm not going to tell you what shape I'm going to draw. But okay. I'm just going to draw a shape. And, and I want to think about the shape for a second. All I'm right. On some shapes. So I'm just going to draw a shape. Now, Rich, don't no pressure, <laughs> no <laughs> pressure if you don't get the shape right. Because if you don't get the shape right, we got part two. We could try it again. But uh, I'm, I'm I just drew a shape. Uh huh. I'm gonna concentrate on the shape, and I'm gonna see if Rich gets the shape. Transmitting through the Wi-Fi Tesla style live from Planet X. Rich. Don't second guess yourself. Whatever's the first shape that pops in your mind, see what shape you picked. Triangle. Nope. Didn't get that one. Didn't get that one. Party people, it was a circle. Uh, now. That was, that was, yeah, yeah. But you now, said don't second guess. Yeah, I, yo, but see, sometimes it comes like that. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to draw a shape. I'm going to see what shape Rich draws. No, actually, I'm going to see what shape Rich chooses. Go ahead. It's on you. Mm. Rectangle. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich chose. You see that is not a square. The side (laughs) shapes are different. That is a rectangle coming to you live from Planet X. Good job, Rich. And the man said, second guess, 
was the circle on the first try. So as you can see, so Rich, man, yo, it's, it's the craziness, the live from Planet X. Man, I want to ask you, have you ever had any strange experiences, unexplained or odd encounters in your travels on this planet? Has anything out of the ordinary happened to you that just kind of made you think like, what, what's going on? Any, any, any encounters? Yeah, most recently, you know, we... Let me know, let me know. Tell the people, tell the people. Head, heading to South Carolina. And, you know, we always travel early in the morning. And we, you know, um, once you hit, once you once you get into South Carolina, that's all rural area, you know. And I thought maybe I had fallen asleep because... You were driving? Or yeah. you were a passenger? You were driving. And I okay. thought that it seemed like we went over the same area twice. <laughs> and, and then, you know, just over, I don't, I don't know if like I, said, <laughs> I, thought I fell asleep, but you know, I'm like, no, this, and, and, and then I saw there's an abandoned restaurant um, over off to the right. I saw, you know, someone standing in the, in the, um, in the doorway. And I had to do a double take. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, this, and that's, that's, uh, even when I was at the Art Institute, you know, I was coming home one, one, well, early one morning, because you remember in um, sixth quarter, four, uh, fifth and sixth quarter, I also ran the studio at night. So I was doing yeah. too much. Shout doing out to the big A room. That class was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I'm coming back uh, home, and the last thing I remember was Jupiter. I saw the sign that said Jupiter. Mm -hmm. When I woke up, I was looking at Stewart, and it scared me. The rumble strip scared me. Man, I jerked the wheel. The car just started spinning, you know, going around and around in circles. And then the only way I could get it to stop was turn loose the wheel. And when I turned loose the wheel, it's just like it just stopped. And... You know, my heart, my heart's pounding and stuff like that. And I'm like, there's no way I drove all that way. <laughs> Yo, you went through a wormhole. You went through like exactly. a wormhole. <laughs> so, you know, some crazy stuff, man. But, you know, um, deja vu is probably the the biggest um, uh, strange occurrence. Um, being in a situation that I felt I've been there before, you know, it's just, um, it seems to be a repetitive with me um even when um i've met some people that i'm like dang i could i, I swear i've been here before you know All right yeah mm -hmm. yo rich man um yo what do you think is the most important quality of a film director to deal with all types of situations listening you know he has to listen you know um people will communicate to you exactly where they are, if you'll listen. You know, most of the times we listen only to defend. You know, we're trying to, we, we spend so much time trying to rebut that we're not actually listening. And there's a depth of hearing that goes further than just the sound that vibrates in your ears, you know. I, I had a young lady tell me one time, she says, she says, I understand what you're saying, but you're not listening to me. And I said to her, but I am, because actions speak louder than words. I'm watching what you're doing, and your and actions speak more than what you're saying. So if you'll just hear me, then, you know, we can find some common ground. So I think for a, a director, you know, it's not just what the person says, but it's their body language. It's, you know, if a person's nervous, bro, you can see it. You can see it. If, if they're unsure, it's, and especially on camera, if the director can't see it, trust me, the camera sees it because the camera never blinks, you know. You're unsure about your response, or you're unsure. Even if if you've forgotten your lines, let me mm -hmm. tell you something, bro. The camera don't blink. The camera sees it. 
I was going to ask you, too. That was one of my questions. Do you have any, like, like Rich, sometimes, you know, like, when you got to, like, study lines to say for a movie, sometimes it might be something short and quick. Sometimes it's something long, and you'd be like, oh, my gosh, like, how do I memorize this? <laughs> like, 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 what's your take on that? Like, like, how do you do it, or do you have any advice on how to memorize long Damn it, like paragraphs, you know, like, like with me, like, I just, I just tell you my take, what I did. I took the lines that I had to try to memorize, and it was a lot. And I just recorded myself saying them to some music so I could listen to it over and over and over and over again to memorize it. That helped me memorize it because when I was just looking at it, it was like, how am I supposed to memorize? Is this without like reading it? It's like crazy, you know. So I I give actors props, man, for that skill, man. Well, you you hit the nail on the head. You learn it like you would learn a piece of music. How is it that we can you know we can recite all the lyrics to you know uh, Tupac song or? <laughs> to... Rich, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still oh, here. Oh, I'm still oh, here. Uh, the lines, you huh? know? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What'd you say? So, therein lies... Um, I'll chop that. I'll edit that. Don't worry, work. Yeah, therein lies uh, some of the struggle. Learn it like you learn the lyrics for a song. That's how. That's how I would. That's how I would do it. When it's when I'm when I'm when I'm learning, if it's like a monologue, then you know. You have to learn it like you learn in the song. If it's if it's on the spot, like you show up to an audition and they give you these, these long lines, the key is memorize the first line and the last line. Make sure that you look directly into the camera with your first line and your last line. The lines in between, you can read them, but you have to read them with, with conviction. And when you read them, don't forget to look up every now and again at the camera. <laughs> True. Yo, Rich, yo, do you ever give your actors like any leeway to add like some improv stuff into the scenes? Absolutely. Um, with me, if 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 a line is if a line is important, if it's like foreshadowing for something that's going to happen down the road, I'll tell them, listen, I need you to give me that. But for the most part, the lines are a roadmap. What I want is the emotion mm -hmm. attached to the line. You know, right. and sometimes you can get you can get more in a mistake <laughs> than you get from what's written. <laughs> um, for instance, there's something else that Bill Duke taught um, his his class. He was like, if you're going to make a mistake, make it big. You know, this way you're memorable. You know, there's this um, um, there's a story, and I, I I think if I'm not sure, I think uh, it was Bette Midler. She was she was going to an audition. And, you know, one of the one of the big caveats with um, casting directors, you don't you don't come in chewing gum. You, you just don't do that. You know, <laughs> so what she had done was she walks she walks into this audition and she smacked it. I mean, she's going to town. Right. <laughs> and so immediately the auditors, are like, you know, they're, they're like, who the hell is this? And, you know, they green as hell. And so she's smacking the gum. And so finally, one of them tells her, listen, you need to remove the gum, okay, before you start your audition. To add insult to injury, she takes the gum out of her mouth and sticks it to the bottom of the stool. <laughs> so now they, they're like, you know, they're pissed. There ain't no way in the world she gonna get this part, right? So she does the she does the read and you know she gets up and she walks away, leaving the gum under the stool. So one of the you know, one of the auditioners gets up and goes up to the stage and she's pissed off. She picks up the stool 
in anger, when she has a piece of paper, she's going to remove the gum. There's no gum. Wow. <laughs> she did it on purpose, but it was right. memorable, and right. she got the part. Wow. Wow. So Shout Make out to Bette Midler. Word is born, yo. Yo, Rich, man, you know what? We're all blessed to be alive today, man. We woke up today, man. You know what I'm saying? We are, we are like so blessed, like to have this time, man. You see what's going on in the world, man. What keeps you inspired and motivated to keep going? What, what, what drives you? Hope. Every day is a new 24. Hope. You, you know, you might have, you know, here's, here, here's something. If, if people don't learn anything from this podcast or from this interview, they need to take this with them. Stop letting people embarrass you about your failures. Failures are not the end. Failure should be the motivator to keep you moving forward. We've all failed in life, every last one of us. When you first started walking, you fell. Isn't that a failure? When you first started riding a bicycle, you fell. Okay, that's a failure. Okay, but you're walking today. You can ride a bike today. You're running today. So failure is a part of life. Failure is a part of the process. You know, and as long as you don't quit, failure is just the motivator. Listen, I found a hundred ways not to do it. I just need to find the right way to get it done. Awesome. So that would be it, man. Stop letting people embarrass you with regards to, you know, oh, he, you know, he tried it, he failed. Man, that's that's a part of life. Word up, man. I salute you, my friend, man. And um, yo, I know you like you're a very inspirational person to me. Like, <clears throat> really, you really are, bro. You don't even know, man. Like, you you inspire me so much. You don't even know. Just to keep it keep it going, and and like <clears throat> you're a very inspirational speaker. <clears throat> Excuse me, I uh, was getting a little choked up there, but um. What was it like, man, to go to the Art Institute, graduate, and then come back to speak to the graduating class students in the future? What was, what was that experience like, yo? Wow. I that's a, that's a big honor, because they don't ask. They don't just ask anybody to come back and speak to the students. You feel me? I was, I was, I was honored, man, um, um, very much so, because... Um, I got to tell you, you know, several of my kids were at that commencement. So they got to see their father address a graduating class. And man, it was it was it was a surreal moment. Um, and, you know, to be able to do that, that's something that no one can take that away from you. This is something else that Bill Duke, he has a saying, and that saying is, you should aspire to inspire before you expire. Mm. You know? And if you are doing that, that's the greatest legacy you can leave. What you do in the life of someone else, how you touch someone else's life. And so even though I was honored, you know, that they even they even asked when I got the call, I was like, you want me to do what? <laughs> you know, um, mm. I was honored and somewhat flattered. But to to hear you say that, you know, I've actually inspired you, bro, yeah. if I've only done that, then my life wasn't in vain, you know, and each and every person should, should understand and should know that somebody is watching them, okay? And so what we do in our lives and in the lives of others is important, man, man. You know, Absolutely. Um, you, you, you remind me of a, a story when we were actually touring um, with Love Trap. We went to we went to L.A. and there was this eight year old kid, man, sitting outside of one of the screenings for the film festival. And um, our lead character, uh, his name's Julius Gold, and Julius was walking up. And as he got closer, the kid, you know, he kept looking and he kept looking. And you know, I saw I saw joked around with Julius, and I'm like. Well, you got kids all the way out here? 
I said, that, that boy looking at you like he really know you, know you. And he's like, stop playing, Fitz, stop playing. And so as we get closer, the kid now stands up and he's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, your tree is golden. And I'm like, oh, bro. Uh, and he was like, I don't know the kid. <laughs> but the kid had saw a movie that Julius was in that Julius wanted to forget. The movie was entitled Cracker Jack. And in Julius's opinion, he didn't want to be remembered for Cracker Jack. But this kid saw that film. And you know the reason why he was at the film festival? Mm. He brought a film of his own. Wow. At eight years old. So I told Julius, I said, good or bad, man, you had an effect on that kid's life. And that's something that you, you'll you never be able to deny. You know? Oh, man, that's amazing, man. Yeah, man, I salute you, man. And, yo, you're, like, so dope, man. And I, I really want I really want to push, try my best to do what I can do to push you out there more to the world so people know about you, man. Yo, yo tell the people how can they – Stay up to date with you, the uh, the website, your social media. Let the people know how they can keep in contact with you or get, or get at you. Well, we have all the social media, man. We've got you know Instagram, Black Trout Entertainment at Inst- um, on Instagram. Um, our website is uh, blacktroutentertainment.com. You can actually sign up for our, for our newsletter, um, and you know we're going to start generating um, newsletters for for our audiences moving forward because we're at a crucial time. Now. We're at our tipping point. You know, we've got streaming, we've got, you know, distribution, we've got a theatrical release, we've got, you know, this uh, newest project that's in pre-production. I want to, um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Ray Murphy, man, who, you know, um, actually saw. Um, the Ray video. Murphy. Yes. Scott. Big um, up. Mercy also, his partner, Hope Meyer, you know, who, who, it was a struggle in the beginning, but they, they, they believed in what we were trying to achieve, what we were building, and so I want to give a shout out to them. The newest project is entitled "The Witch of Rose Hall." You know, I'm gonna go on record to say that one's gonna be, you know, one theatrical blockbuster. And I also want to give a shout out to the uh, writer, uh, Taliba Morgan. Um, what an incredible uh, screenwriter! See, that's what it's all about, my man. You know, giving other people opportunity. You don't always have to be the first one through the door. Exactly. I'd be trying to, I'd be telling cats, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, hey, listen, each one bring one. Exactly. You know? um, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this too now. I'm looking for some music for um, for Lawless. So let me know. Let me know. And I'll I put the word out there, you know what I'm saying, for real. And, and, and bring me a hot joint for, yeah. for my. Uh, for the for the opening for the intro you know um let's see if we can get something popping there i got another project that's in the works right now um still doing some writing called alphabet city and alphabet city is going to be hard bro mm. uh, i've uh you know engaged several mainline artists but i also want to bring some local talent to the stage man if they are number one educable Number two, they listen. And number three, they understand that this is business first. You know, yeah, everybody wants to put on a show, but without the business, there is no show business. True that. Hey, yo, so give the people a little teaser. What's Alphabet City about? Like, can you can you give the people a little little teaser for what what that is? Sure. Um, well, right now, um, streaming live on Two B TV is. The Zora Neale Hurston uh, documentary. Um, I'm actually in it, but I was also instrumental in bringing it to distribution. It was shot locally here, but you know Zora Neale Hurston is iconic, man. She's she was a trailblazer. You know she she lived the last days of her they, life like, right in Fort right Pierce, 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 man. But we need to know about people such as that. We've got Bad Candy, which is a horror anthology. You know, it's in post-production right now, um, but should be ready for release. Probably see it around about August, September, October. Um, we've got a lot of interest um, in Bad Candy. Um, Bad Candy's crazy, bro. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if, you, if you're squeamish, 
I see. Yeah, you I might want to see that one out. <laughs> it, looks, it looks ill, man. It looks Ill. The director of uh, Bad Candy, um, and also to Desiree O'Connell, who is the the writer of uh, Bad Candy. Um, we already talked about The Witch of Rose Hall, but we've got Alphabet City on deck. Uh, we're going back and revisiting part of a champion. We're going to pull that one off the shelf. Um, it's going to be shot. Um, um, champion, and, rest in peace to your brother, man. Eternal. Amen. Eternal. Amen. That's a passion project. And, and, you know, thanks for, you know, remembering, you know, the, 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 the underlying story there is the, you know, is the story of my brother. And, Absolutely. you know, that's something near and dear to my heart. You know, for anyone who thought that I might let that story go, yeah, you thought wrong. Um, you know, but it has to be done right. You know what I mean? Um, we want to yeah. be able to do each and every story we produce. We want to be able to do it justice. So um, we've got a couple of other projects that are um, in development right now. And listen, we're also looking for new projects. If, you, if you've got a story that you want to tell and you think it's ready, hit me up, you know. You can contact me on that front at info at trinitymediacapital.com. You know, um, Trinity Media Capital was formed and designed for uh, to build that infrastructure for new talent and for new artists, um, and for new playwrights, screenwriters. That's what yeah. Trinity Media Capital is. And hit the link in the bio be below. I have all these links in the bio so y'all open up them dumb links, you know what I'm saying? And I want, I want to give a shout out to you too, man, for holding it down. You know, family, man, listen, it ain't easy trying. trying to build as well as hold your family down. You know, um, those that those that can can carry that balance are special individuals, man. So, you know, I want to give a shout out to you for continuing to persevere and, and press forward and push hard, man. But know this, that, you know, united, together, we can all bring that special something to the table, each and every one of us stand in our lane, and man, we can be successful time after time after time again. I've proven it. You know, it works. All we got to do is work it. You feel me? Yo, word is born. Yo, word is born, Rich, man. I, I thank you, and I appreciate that, man. Yo, I'm just, I just wanted to just interject, man, because I'm, I'm coming in. I'm like, yo, it's Friday night, man, and I see you got, like, this stuff on streaming. What's, what's, the, what's the quiet zone? What is that? Zone is actually like that title. <laughs> it's, a, it's going to be an independent feature that, uh, you know, it's one of them stories that take place in the woods. You know, here's a father who, um, you know, he, he goes on a hiking trip in order to commemorate the death of his, his wife. And he has his kids with him and he runs into a clan of cannibals. Mm -hmm. so up the woods and Bro, that thing is gonna be off the chain. You hear me? Yo, um, that, so that looks interesting. I do want to check that out. That has, has actually, um, uh, we've garnered um, distribution even before we've we've hit the uh, set with it. So we've got a lot of good projects, man, uh, on the table. So I'm looking forward. That's what's up, man. Yo, you ever want to do any like uh, reality, like? almost guerrilla style filming reality type stuff seeing because i i got i had this one connect with this dude with the ghost hunters i don't know if you want to do any ghost hunting type of stuff this guy's got like some connections with like travel channel and and the mugs man i'll link you up with the mugs man yeah man, there's, there's a <laughs> lot of stories around here man you know, right around here. He was, talking about, he was talking about coming up here to to the the devil's tree in Port St. Lucie. He was talking about yeah. coming. Up, he was talking about coming up here to, to do that, John. He's like, after the quarantine's over, he wants me to be on an episode. I was like, that's maybe actually, a little spooky, but I'm down to go. I'm bound down to go. <laughs> that's actually one of uh, one of the projects in development, man. You know, I went out there. Now, let me tell you something. Something's <laughs> not right out there. Man. You were asking me earlier about you know. You know, you know, occurrences that you right, know, right, right. You up. We, when we went to the park, there was this guy cleaning fish, and he was like, "What are you guys here for?" And at first, I was like, "Well, they ain't really out here cleaning fish on a tree in the park. Exactly. They really ain't any business, but okay." And he was like, "You out here? You out here because of the tree?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know, we we want to see where the tree is." And 
um, me and my man, we, dude, we turned our back for maybe, maybe two, three minutes. Bro, gone and the fish gone. What? You know, then we walk out there, right? I actually have footage too. So for anybody that said, nah, bro, I got footage. We walked out there. And in certain spots, you can, I mean, you can hear flies just buzzing, but you don't see no flies. There are no flies. And then I looked overhead, and man, there had to be at least a hundred buzzards flying overhead. I got the footage. Okay, I got the receipts, as you know, y'all folks were saying. And I'm like, what the heck? Why are there why are there so many buzzards out here? We went out there in the daytime though, but it's gonna be shot in the evening. So yeah, you know, what? some crazy stuff going on out there. What? Yeah, man, I, I'm always a little scared to go over there. I don't even. I might not even want to go. Shoot, man, I, don't know. I might. That might be one I might have to cast you in. <laughs> <laughs> yo, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out, man. But yo, 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 rich man, yo, um, yo, what do you think nowadays special effects role is in telling a story? Do you think? Do you think? Is special effects is something so much critical or is it not that critical, depending on what you're doing? You know what I'm saying? I mess around my green screen a little bit. I'm still trying to master that mug, trying to get it going. <laughs> well, well, I like, uh, I like I the visual effects that are more organic than just the computer. I mean, certain things, yeah, computer generated, if it's done well, then right. it seems then it can be seamless but and they call you know, that they call that like just um, the other day physical like physical day, physical I props with, um, i was talking with william william um mesa now, william mesa is one incredible um visual effects artist and um man he dates back to the creature from the black lagoon you feel me mm -hmm. um but i was talking to him the other day and what? we had that conversation about you know visual effects um, um, as compared to special effects. Now, I think everything has its place in storytelling, but I think the things, those things that are more organic will get a, a better, a, 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 a stronger reaction. You know, um, we, effects, when right. we went out there to film the, the sizzle, the little sizzle reel for um, the devil's tree, um, in the clip, you see that you see the, the the cat get drugged through the trees. Okay, <laughs> but we actually pulled that gag off, and I'm you know, I'm gonna tell you how we did it, because when you see it, you'll be like, wow. What we did was, you know, we he had to hit his mark. Okay, so he's running through he's running through the trees, he's running through the bushes, but there was a there was a a rope that had a noose in it, and he had to land squarely in the middle of that noose. And so when he stopped, we had three guys Ooh. up in the bushes, they snatched the <laughs> rope, and obviously it, you know, it, it, it wrapped around his ankles, yeah. and they drug him into it. <laughs> but right. it looks good, you know what I mean? So right. that kind of thing, you know, is, is organic, but, you know, and the feel of it is, um, I guess the feel of it is more, this one, you know, so that kind of in your face stuff. I like that. I like that in your face stuff, you know, because I believe that if if it bleeds across the screen, then it'll touch the audience. And if it touches the audience, you've done your job. True that. Word up, man. And Rich, man, you have definitely did your job, man. And I thank you so much today for the time that you have, man. And yo, we got to link up, man, soon, man. We got to link up, man. We got to. We got to sit down, man, chop it up, eat some food, drink some wine, chill out, man, hang out, man, just, just, yo, zigzags right down the road, man. We got to definitely link up sooner than later, man, even during all this pandemic, you know what I'm saying? But, yo, we got to link up, man, for real, man. And I thank you so much for being here today, man. Yo, yo, anybody you want to shout out? Any, any, any shout outs? Well, you know, I just want everyone that, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, the current situation and you're stuck at home and, you know, maybe going a little stir crazy. I just want to say, man, listen, just, just hang in there. 
you know, if, if you need to reach out to somebody, reach out to somebody and talk to someone because that human interaction is more important than we give than, than we give heed to. So I just want to give a shout out to everyone that's still in the trenches, man. That's still your son, your daughter, where his boss. Yeah. Um, um, big ups to big moms, uh, wifey. You know what I'm saying? Shout out everybody for real. Yeah, man. You know, just keep holding it down, man. Um, um, and I'm grateful to you, man, for having me aboard. You know, I, you know, I watch the podcast, and you know, you seem to be having fun with it, man. And that's that's that too is important, man. Have fun with it. You know what I mean? I want to open it. up more. I want to open up more. I want to open up more to give a platform for people, and yeah, people we could just say and do what we want to do and promote what we want to promote. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to do and talk about these crazy subjects that a lot of people are scared to talk about. <laughs> you know, and I, I, you know, it's 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 a, it's all in the works. It's it's developing. <laughs> it's developing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Hey, <laughs> well, man, listen, we definitely gotta get together, man. I need some music. Um, you know, Yo, you know, hit up about. my brother Fontaine on the beats, Dave on the beats, V Sharp on the beats, all my little crew of beat makers, me and myself. Uh. I send you some stuff. Use what use what you want, man. For real, man. We 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 get it popping, man. Try my best. I try. I hope I hope I send you something that you feel deems worthy. It's worthy. <laughs> well, that's all I can ask you for is your best, my man. You know. Oh, man. I tell you what. I, I I even tell my cast that. Give me your best. I'll do the rest. Just give me your best. You that's know, so, man. People people when the first time you know in front of the camera they're nervous you know and. We actually had a premiere where we we showed scenes from the first seven episodes, and you know the cast was man, the cast was in there shaking like a leaf on a tree because they had invited the you know the, the the people, you know, the family and stuff, and they were like, oh my god, I don't I don't want to stink, you know. Mm-hmm. And so afterwards, everybody kept coming and said, man, we didn't expect that, and I was like, wait a minute, what did you expect, you know? And one of my cast members like, man, he pat me on the back, he's like. Man, I'm gonna thank you, man, for, for making me look good. I said, hold on, let me stop you. Let me stop you right there. If you hadn't given me something, it wouldn't be on the screen. So what you need to do, don't be so hard on yourself, pat yourself on the back, because you had to give me something. Without that, it wouldn't be there. And he was like, you're right, <laughs> you know? So we get, if we all give our best, I want um, one more shout out, man. I want to give a shout out to um, yeah, Coach, man. Shout out, Williams. Coach, uh, Coach Harry Belafonte Williams, because he taught me this. He said, no matter where it is, whether it's on the wrestling mat or if it's on the field, if you've left everything in the field of play, nobody can blame you for anything because you gave your best, you gave your all. So I gotta give him a shout out for that, man. I've had some pretty incredible mentors in my life man and right. you know they they and they imbued me with that never give up you know keep pushing you know because as long as there's life there's hope you know yeah. and each day is a new 24 so don't yeah. worry about what happened yesterday push forward true that word is born you're definitely an inspiration to me and i salute you my hats off to you sir and i salute you rich thank you for being with me today and we're going to work hopefully we can Make something dope happy, you know what I'm saying? Bobby, what are you doing up at this hour? Still don't know what it is or where it comes from, but there's something there. Bobby, you've been dreaming again. Where'd you see all this, Bobby? As a matter of fact... Bobby, what are you doing up at this hour? Bobby, you've been dreaming again. Still don't know what it is or where it comes from, but there's something there. Where'd you see all this, Bobby? Bobby, what are you doing up at this hour? Bobby, you've been dreaming again. Still don't know what it is.